Hello, and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here. I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group, and I am joined, as always, by my fellow reader, Claire. Thanks, Kirstra. I'm Claire, and I moderate As the Page Turns here at the library and also our historical fiction group on Facebook. Yes, and today is one of our themed episodes that we're bringing to you, um, and we are going to be talking about myths and retellings. Yes, this was pretty exciting. So, mm-hmm. Do you read a lot of myths and retellings just in your ordinary course of life? You know what? I used to. I used to really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I buy the teen books here, so mm-hmm. there is you know, kind of a little niche there with a lot of myths and retellings, but um, I hadn't in a while, so this was kind of a good refresher for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I feel like myths and retellings are where the kids who read fairy tales grow up to be. Yeah. And I was definitely one of those kids. Me too. Yeah. I used to have those old like fairy, like the blue and green or whatever fairy books that my parents bought. So nice. Yeah. Um, Well, would you like to kick us off with a myth or retelling? Sure. I will do a myth retelling. And this was also one that I read with my daughter as Book of the Month Club. It's Kaikei by Vaishnavi Patel. Um, And I really have not read a lot of Indian myths or literature. Mm -hmm. So this one really interested me just from that perspective. Uh, So the, uh, the first quote. Um, The way the book starts is, I was born on the full moon under an auspicious constellation, the holiest of positions. Much good it did me. So, (laughs) That's a good opening. Yeah, it was a really good opening, and it sucked me right in. So, so begins Kaikei's story. Um, She's the only daughter uh, in the kingdom of Kakea, and I believe she had seven brothers, one of whom was a twin to her. So she was raised on tales of the gods and their great benevolence. Um, But then there was trouble in the land, and somehow her mother was banished by her husband, the king. So this was, of course, very distressing for her. She spent a lot of time with her mother studying scrolls. Mm -hmm. She was very, very educated for a woman, very atypical for, Mm -hmm. for her time. Um, and her twin brother actually started training her to be a warrior. So mm. she spent a lot of time on horseback. She spent time doing swords, all kinds of things, and uh, drawing, uh, driving chariots, too. Oh, cool. Yeah. So she was not a typical princess. Mm-hmm. So her father arranges, of course, an arranged marriage for her. She was highly upset. At first, she did not want to go along with it. But she ended up marrying another ruler who of course it was consolidating power yes it it, it was good for her father Mm -hmm. and good for his kingdom you know the two kingdoms binding together and she actually had a lot of like and respect for this man so um he had two other wives she became friends with them too uh if you're not used to the 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 society a lot of Mm -hmm. it was like oh okay you know (laughs) but um little culture shock a little bit of a culture shock And as mothers, they all had sons at the same time. And Hmm. what she had done is she was so adamantly opposed to getting married that she made her future husband promise to her that if she had a son, even though she was the third and youngest wife, that her son would inherit the kingdom. (laughs) That was like a big premise in this book. So all three of the wives get pregnant. All three of the wives have sons. So they all kind of grew up together, and there's most of them got along, but then the story begins to change strategy, and and that's Mm. when I think it differs. The one thing I read a lot of reviews, and they said that in real life, Kakei was not a good character at all in the um, the Indian epic, epic, the Ramayana, Ramayana. So she in that epic, is portrayed as a very jealous queen. She tries Mm. to plot to put her own son on the throne over the other more senior wives. Um, So I don't know how much of the the story in the book is the own author's perception Mm -hmm. and how she wanted to change the character so she wouldn't be quite so evil. 
Mm -hmm. Um, She's very, we would consider her now a feminist. She started a women's council. She really had the ear of her husband, the king. Um, And that part was good. Like women could come to her and do their troubles and she would mete out justice. So she was very, very influential Mm -hmm. um, and went on a lot of missions and things, diplomatic missions for her husband. So it was interesting. I will say that over... Probably approaching like yeah, it's 472. Chunky. This was a chunk. This was a big <laughs> chunk. So you got to be ambitious to want to read this. Yeah. But it was interesting, you know, and good. And it kind of at least exposed me a little bit to myths and cultures that I normally would not have read about. Sure. So fascinating. Yeah. I, the, the book has gotten a huge amount of buzz. Like it's a very popular book. Yes. And actually um, book of the month club is now like voting on their best books of the year. And mm-hmm. this one was one of the ones being that made it through the fine, mm-hmm. you know, fine. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like it's not going to be on Claire's best of list though. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you what I liked. The one thing that was really interesting is she had a special power. It was called the binding plane where, like, say you and I are friends Mm -hmm. and I might have a blue thread that goes to you and Mm -hmm. I can see that thread in connection and when you might be angry with me or when you're happy with me, like, she can visibly see these relationships, which I thought was really cool. I could just kind of imagine it. Um the other interesting thing, and I don't know if this was true or not, but they made her asexual in this hmm. book. So she had a very, like, she loved her husband. She respected mm-hmm. him, but she was she was kind of unto herself. So mm-hmm. that was different. Um, and I kind of, you know, I and I really liked the part about her brother and her training, mm-hmm. you know, the twins. And, and that bond of being a twin sure. was very strong. Um But the length of it and just sometimes just the characters and the names and not being familiar with the Mm -hmm. myths, I kind of lost place, like, you know, where I was a couple of times and had to really do almost do research to get back. Mm -hmm. So interesting. So for that reason, it wouldn't be a five star read for me. Okay. But I thought it was good. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Three to four. Okay. Strong three and a half to four. Nice. All right. Well, I am going to start um, with my myth, um, which is also from my stack of shame. Oh, look at you go. I know. Um, It is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornacek. I Um, love that cover. It's a beautiful cover. Actually, they're both very beautiful covers. We've got some stunning cover art here. Sucker for a good cover. Me too. Um, So this book has been on my list for a long time. Um, I think it was actually also one of my like anticipated reads for 2021. Oh yeah, I think you've been talking about (laughs) this book for a while, girl. For a long time, and I finally (laughs) picked it up. And um, for me, it didn't 100% live up to the hype. Um, So this is. A retelling of Norse mythology. Um, the witch of the title is Angerboda, who, um, so the name translates to something like bringer of sorrows. Uh, oh, wow. Which is pretty, pretty accurate. apt. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she is a witch. She is from the land of giants. Um, if you are familiar at all with Norse mythology, there's like nine worlds, and they're all connected by the world tree. Um, So Midgard is where the people live. And if you've seen like any of the Thor movies, this is familiar to you. And Jotunheim is where the giants live. So, and they're not necessarily like actually bigger. It's very strange, but giants. So she is a giantess. She is a witch. Um, At the beginning of the book, um, she has just sort of, come back to herself after having been burned alive by Odin. Um, So she has uh, the power. I have no idea how to actually pronounce it. Um, But this, uh, in Norse mythology, it is the power essentially of like um, seeing. Like she, she can go into a trance and see the future. Okay. Basically. And Odin wants her to 
teach him how to use this magic, which she does a certain amount, and also the goddess Freya. And he wants her to go like deeper and deeper and see farther and farther, and she refuses. So he takes out her heart and burns her. Like three times this happens, and that's all part of like the wow. canon of Norse mythology. So Odin's a pretty pretty cool dude. Um, so she has just come back to life. She has no real memories of her life before. Um, and she just starts kind of building a new life for herself. Um, but does he always know who she is? Unclear. Okay. Unclear. Um, she is definitely hiding at the beginning of the book. Um, but she is found by Loki who is Odin's blood brother, um, who has her heart. And Loki returns her heart to her that was removed before she was burned. Um, And things progress. She and Loki fall in love. They marry. um, And they start having children. Um, And Angerboda is the mother of Hel, who is the goddess of... Um, she essentially rules over the um, unworthy dead. So anyone who doesn't go to Valhalla goes to Hell's kingdom. Um, so if you are old and you die in your sleep, that is not glorious. And you, you go to Hell, <laughs> as it were. Um, and she also gives birth by Loki to Fenrir, who is a giant wolf, and Jormungard, who is the world serpent. He is a serpent so long he actually encircles the world. So, and all of this, you know, this is just magic. These things happen when gods are around. Um, so, as, as it does. <laughs> as it does. Um, so, th- this is a retelling from kind of the perspective of a side character. Okay. So Angerboda shows up in like the old epics just as kind of like a footnote, basically. Like it's mentioned, um, Loki fathers these children with her and she is a witch. And that's basically all you get. So what the author has done is found this one little character and kind of teased her out and given her her own backstory okay. and her own life. So the mythology part of it was very interesting. So the, you know, big cast of Norse characters show up. Odin is in there. Thor is in there. Like the, the uh, greatest hits all show up here and there. Um, what I didn't love about it was actually the style, the way it was written. Um, it's a very much... A tell not show book mm. and I have a hard time with those yeah um so a lot of stuff happens but you get like it's very declarative about a lot of things like and then you know eight years go by and now Angerboda is doing this thing and I I don't know it's hard to describe but it just kept me from really sinking into the story mm-hmm. it wasn't an immersive reading experience for right. me and it was it. It actually turned into a, a little bit of a slog, which I hate to say. Yeah. I hate to say it because it was interesting, and I wanted so badly to love this book, but I just, in the end, I didn't. Three stars. No worries. Got to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's like it's just not the book for you. Exactly. We yeah. talked about that a lot. Yeah. So. And even sometimes, you know, it could be the right book for you, but not at the right time. Correct. So yeah. I would love to hear from other folks who have read it. I know we have at least one person on staff that this was their, f- like, best book of last year. Right. So clearly it hits for a lot of people. It just didn't quite hit for me. Yeah. It's so deceptive because I think that looks so Celtic. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of the Celtic stuff is actually Norse, Norse, because oh. the the Vikings just were always over in the British Isles. They were they spent a lot of time living in England, what okay. is now England and Ireland. Yeah. Um, and if you go up to Scotland, like the place names are Norse, especially yeah. in like the Hebrides. Yeah. 
Okay. It's crazy. Noted. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to take us in a different direction. Please do. Uh, one, this is a YA or a teen book. And another very pretty cover. It is. This is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh. And this is sort of based on Korean myth and folklore. Mm -hmm. So we will start with the Korean homeland is experiencing horrible storms, um, lots of problems, which they attribute to the angry sea god. So when floods are starting to take away the villages and things are happening, the, the answer is, is to sacrifice the most beautiful maiden in the village to hopefully go be the bride of the sea god so he will stop this nonsense and stop the flooding. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, why not? So, why not? Um, so one poor girl is chosen uh, to be the bride of, of the sea. And this year it is Shim Cheong, who is the most beautiful, most wonderful girl in the village. Um, the problem is, is our main character is actually a girl named Mina. Mm. And her older brother, Jun, is in love with Shim Cheong. And he goes out on a boat while she sneaks into the boat, unbeknownst to them, and reveals herself at the last minute when this poor girl is going to sacrifice herself to the sea god. And she cuts herself and says, I declare that I will be the bride of the sea god, you know, because she loves her brother and her family, mm. and she doesn't want to see them unhappy. She doesn't feel it's fair. I volunteer as tribute. I volunteer as tribute, pretty much. So... She falls into the water and almost discovers a place like Atlantis. It's mm. like there's a kingdom beneath the sea. Oh, cool. Yeah. And a red, from where she cut her palm, there's a red ribbon which she follows, which leads her to the, the sea god who was a young man. Mm -hmm. And she's stunned. It's like, wait a minute, this guy is about as old as I am. And <laughs> doesn't look that powerful like mm -hmm. what's up here so she promptly has other people that intercept her and one of the the gods of the underworld cuts her ribbon thread mm -hmm. um which is a big part of it then to who it attaches to so it's a it's a mystery kind of like why isn't the sea god powerful anymore what has happened um she had a bond and was hoping that she would also save her village. Now mm -hmm. she's not sure she she can, but she only has like a month's time to be able to live under the sea like this mm -hmm. as a human to figure out the mystery, save her people. Um, and then other girls that have been sacrificed, like she's running into them. It's great. You know, like, oh my gosh, there was so-and-so who got sacrificed two <laughs> years ago. You know, so none of them have huh. done the trick. Um, ah. But it's very mythical, and I got very into just the world under the sea. Yeah. And quite fascinated by there. And there is a romance. Like, she does mm -hmm. develop a romance, which, of course, in all it's YA novels, you, yeah. you have to have that. But it was very, it was good. Like, I kept reading. So this one I would actually rate four stars. Mm -hmm. um, and I really liked the way she wrote. Um, I could kind of visualize a lot of the things that she was seeing. Yeah. And you learn the importance of ancestors and the wisdom of ancestors. Mm -hmm. You know, like, trying to get to get back into some of her previous generations of family to kind of figure out this mystery um, because she is very well versed in the folklore and the stories because her grandmother shared a lot of these stories so she knows like what to expect mm. and what may be happening so she definitely I is the key but I don't want to divulge like mm -hmm. how she solves the mystery sure. or how it goes wrong or whether or not she has a happy ending. Okay. So I will just make people read and find out. But I really liked it. It was yeah. The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. So. And this author, I mean, that sounds amazing. It sounds really good. And that author also has another series out, right? I believe so. so I, I feel like we were looking at the covers of them. Yeah, oh, there's there's some very good kind of like teen, especially in the Asian mm. um, diaspora. Mm -hmm. Like the, the other one I was thinking of reading and didn't get to was about a girl who brews magical tea, which I also thought 
that was Chinese and seemed yeah. very interesting. And the new one is out, but okay, but, um, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, but this one is Korean and um, cool. Yeah, I I, I enjoyed it a well, lot. It sounds lovely. Yeah, very nice. good, very um, entertaining. So my next one is also a teen book. Okay, I have. We were obviously like sending we were, each yeah, other brainwaves, tele- man, yes. all over the place. So this is Hunted by Megan Spooner, and this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Okay. And it is set in Russia. So it is Beauty and the Beast in not not quite medieval Russia, but probably like 17th century mm-hmm. Russia. Um, so Beauty is our main character. Her actual name is Yeva. Um, she is the youngest of three daughters of a merchant um, who has sort of worked his way up in wealth and status to the point where Yeva now spends her days like attending to the Duchess, which she hates because all she wants to do is like go hunting in the woods as she used to do with her father before he made good yeah. as a merchant. So this is all well and good until her father loses everything on a venture. Like the ships do not come in, <laughs> the caravan is hijacked. And he loses everything. And they are forced to um, sell their house, sell most of their belongings, and they move to this tiny little hunting lodge way out in the forest um, that they've maintained but not used. So they are out in, like, the deep, deep country, and Yeva is happy because she can, like, go hunting again. And her father is out hunting to provide for them. And her father becomes obsessed that there is some beast in the woods um, that he needs to, to catch. And he is going out, you know, days at a time looking for this beast. And eventually he doesn't come home. So then Yeva has to go and look for him, theoretically to bring him back. Which, spoiler alert, it's Beauty and the Beast. It doesn't happen. <laughs> um, but she does find the beast, or rather the beast finds her. So we also have the beast who we learn very early on, um, even if it's not set outright, you can put the clues together, <laughs> they're big clues, that the beast is under some kind of curse. So Yeva doesn't figure this out for a good long time. Um, here's the thing. This is very much a Beauty and the Beast story. So if you like the story of Beauty and the Beast, you're gonna like pick this the up. beats are going to be super familiar and you're going to pick it right up and you're going to be like, yes, and here's the part where, and here's the part where. If you don't love the story of Beauty and the Beast, you're going to have the same issues with this book that you do with any retelling of Beauty and the Beast, right? Like, is it Stockholm Syndrome or a love story? <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, but some things just don't age well. <sighs> Haven't we found that? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Um, and this one is slightly better about like a little more organically building the relationship between the two characters. And you get um, more of a little more of the interiority of the beast than you do in most Beauty and the Beast stories, which tend to be all from Beauty's perspective. Mm-hmm. So. It does balance things a, a little bit better than many Beauty and the Beast retellings. Um, but the thing that I really liked about this book was the Russian setting. And they do tie in a lot of the Russian folklore. Like there's actually kind of a running, not quite subplot, but like theme where Yeva was also a big reader. And she and her father like bonded over reading fairy tales so all of these mythical creatures and some of them show up because Mm -hmm. spoiler alert the wood is enchanted of course it is because of course it is like you go far enough into the big bad woods in russia and you find stuff and she does um so it's kind of like the bear and the nightingale that's the one i read that was set in russia which i really like which i haven't read but it's been on my list yeah since you read it (laughs) Um, so that part I, I really liked. Um, and there's some stuff with Yeva's sisters that's interesting. So there, 
there are a lot of other pieces there. It did get a little long. I think it could have used a little bit of an edit to tighten Tighten things up up a little bit. Um, But it was good. It was, I actually enjoyed it more than I expected to for a Beauty and the Beast story. Um, And I would recommend it either for people who enjoy Naomi Novik, or if you have read this one, I would say go read Naomi Novik, who does that Russian folklore slash fairy tale thing really, really well. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. Yeah. So I was... I was kind of hoping for Naomi Novik, and that's not quite fair to Megan Spooner. Yeah. You know, you can't hold one author to to be another, but that's kind of what I was hoping for, and I didn't quite get there, but I still liked it more than I expected to. Okay. So. Well, the last, last one on my list is Beautiful Little Fools by Jillian Cantor. And I had this one on my list because it's a great Gatsby retelling, which I thought was super interesting. The cover, of course, I picked ones with, you know, I hate to judge a book by cover, but I totally did. I picked three three gorgeous covers. Mm -hmm. Um, So this one was interesting to me because it changed the perspective of the great Gatsby from the narrator was, what's his name, Nick... Nick Carraway. Yes, from Nick Carraway to the women that were affected by Jay Gatsby, so, um, which was a trio. So we have Daisy Buchanan, who, mm-hmm. of course, was the young socialite. And I don't remember in the original Gatsby if she was from Lexington, Kentucky, but that's where she was in this book. Um, well-to-do family, and they really meet on a lark. She is with a younger sister, He is stationed at some military base nearby. Mm -hmm. He falls in love with her. And the one difference is in this book, he's he's rather obsessive about Daisy. Isn't that true? Yeah, but like maniacally so. (laughs) Anyway, he he probably wasn't the real... I wanted to reread The Gate Gatsby before I talked about this. He bought that whole mansion and threw all of the parties just to try and get Daisy to show up. Yeah, just to look across and see her little light there on the dock. Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) And then we have Daisy's best friend, who is Jordan Baker, who is a very good Mm -hmm. golfer. Um, Her father has really pushed her into the golfing career. What is interesting about this book is Jordan sexually is is a lesbian Mm -hmm. or at least you know goes Mm -hmm. both ways um so that that added a new dimension and you kind of feel like she is really holding i i thought like if she wasn't romantically interested in daisy that Mm -hmm. she at least was very protective of her Mm -hmm. you know as her oldest and dearest friend and um we have Catherine mccoy who is a suffragette who went out to help her sister in New York. She ends up getting an apartment by herself. And her sister is the woman who becomes one of Tom Buchanan's women mm. who lives in the place mm-hmm, with the mm-hmm, eyes mm-hmm, at the garage. Mm-hmm. So that that is Myrtle. Right. Myrtle, Myrtle Wilson. Yes. yes. So it kind of takes Jay Gatsby's death and makes it into a mystery. Mm. And you know how I love mysteries I and death because, you know, what, what's happier? <laughs> yeah. So it starts the book where Jay Gatsby is shot in his pool and the detective finds a beautiful diamond hairpin at the location. So he doesn't think it was Myrtle's husband that mm-hmm. actually killed them. So you have like him trying to interview these women and you have like back flashes of mm. what is going on, like how they met. Um, how Daisy got to marry Tom Buchanan because Mm -hmm. her father and, you know, sister were killed in a horrible accident and her mother, of course, lost her money. So Daisy was trying to save her family. Um, And so so she marries Tom, who at first, you know, was great and then not so great after a while with his affairs and everything Mm -hmm. else. So... In a way, it follows the storyline, mm-hmm. but it was a lot juicier and more interesting <laughs> than the original Gatsby was to me. Um, I just, I just thought it was, you know, was very jazz age, mm-hmm. but 
you know, you, you really see these women as fleshed out people, not just, you know, briefly. Mm-hmm. Like, because The Great Gatsby is a very small, small. book. It's almost a novella. Yeah. Yeah. So I really liked it. I don't know if it'll be for nice. everyone, but Beautiful Little Fools by Jillian Cantor. Mm-hmm. Well, and we didn't really plan this, but my last book is also a great Gatsby retelling. I'm so telling I, you. We're telling uh, Brainwaves, man. Yeah. So it's The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo. Um, oh, and, and that was also on your it stack. It was also on my stack. Oh, <laughs> just stop making me look bad, Kirstra. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case, there's a lot of similarities between yours and mine. So uh, it is also from... The female perspective, although our main character, really the only point of view character in this one, is Jordan. Oh, really? So the okay. golfer is our main character. And in this retelling, she is um, adopted into her family from Vietnam, or as it was known at that time, Tonkin. Um, so, or French Indochina. Oh. If you want to really get technical. So... There are a few additional layers in here. Um, She is also queer, which is interesting that that they did that, both authors. Um, I would think, too, like being, are they in the South? Are they in Lexington? um, She was from Lexington. Okay, because that might be an identity thing, too. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm jumping into your review. No, 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 not at all. this is what it's like when we get talking about books. Yeah. Um, so she is high society, but she's adopted and she's not white. So she's very much like an outsider insider, mm-hmm. which is interesting because it gives her in a lot of ways, a little bit of remove from the like Daisy, Tom, Nick, whole mess <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know and a mess it was it really was very messy the other thing that this book does is it adds a little bit of magic oh so there is this is just a world where magic exists not everyone does it like it doesn't show up all the time um but it's around um one of the things so with prohibition one of the things that has also been banned is a drink called demoniac, which is actually demon's blood, which carries some like additional properties with it. Okay. So in addition to like bootleg whiskey, people will like bring out a dusty bottle of demon's demoniac blood. demon's blood for special occasions. <laughs> As one does. As one does, apparently. Um, But it's, I loved this book. It was very immersive. um, And it has just enough differences to keep things interesting. I am not a fan of the original Great Gatsby. I I don't care for it. I just want to smack everyone. (laughs) You're like, dry out. Like, take a step back. (laughs) But um, in this case, we have, through Jordan, as this little bit of an outsider, you have sort of the the distance that you can still, like, see the mess going on. Mm Because she sees the mess. And she's a little bit involved, but she's always a little bit apart, too. Okay. So you can wave your finger at the messiness, but you can still also really deeply sympathize with Jordan and her point of view, which is nice. Um, But... Yeah, Jordan in my book was also a very interesting character Mm -hmm. because even at the time, like, there wasn't... There was just the beginnings of, like, a women's tour Mm -hmm. and what she had to go through and how they were... It was just very interesting, the whole perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Um, And there's also, so there's another thread running through this book um, of, this is around the time of like the Chinese Exclusion Act. And Jordan is a little bit worried about what happens to her as an Asian woman Mm -hmm. if that happens. So 
at one point, you know, Daisy is like, let's just run away to Europe. And Jordan's like, that's great. But if I leave this country, am I going to be able to come back? Mm -hmm. And it's unclear, right? So, yeah, I just, I'm having trouble making coherent statements about why I love this book, but I really loved this book. Yeah. I thought it was excellent. There's a little bit of romance, a little bit of heartbreak. Um, Jay Gatsby maybe or maybe not sold his soul to some demons. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but it does also follow the the beats of the original story. Right. So, you know, the trip to New York, the car crash on the way back, all of that stuff happens. Yes. And you in just mine get is, the different perspective. Right. And mine as well. The one thing mm -hmm. that was different was, like, who killed Jay Gatsby? Mm -hmm. And yeah. why? Right. Yeah. So you have mystery. I have magic. And yeah. that seems very fitting. Yeah. <laughs> for Claire and Kirstra. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's what I've got. Um, I did actually want to make one more shout out as far as the myths and retellings go for Rick Riordan's books. Mm -hmm. If you haven't read him. So he writes mostly, um, I think most of the time they get put in like middle grade or teen mm -hmm. kind of wishy-washy but he has a bunch of different series um the most famous one is the percy jackson series which is all about greek mythology but he's also got one on egyptian mythology and norse mythology and they all kind of tie together they're all set in sort of the same universe and they're a lot of fun and very quick reads the interesting thing of, of something else that rick reardon is doing mm -hmm. is he has a kind of like a line a publishing mm -hmm. line imprint. now yeah yes the imprint of rick reardon presents mm -hmm. and he is taking authors of color and female authors and kind of promoting myths and things that are not as well known so yeah. i a shout out to rick reardon for that absolutely and some of those have been very popular as well. Good. So That's awesome. So we would love to hear from you all about what myths and retellings you've been reading. Um, if you have read any of the books that we've talked about today, we always want to know what you think about them. Um, so let us know. Yes. And until next time, keep listening to our podcast. Absolutely. Let us know what you think and what you would like to hear us talk about. Absolutely. And you can subscribe to our podcast Anywhere that you listen, just search for GPL Book Break, or you can find the link to subscribe right on our website. Thanks, everyone. And see you next time. Next time. Book Break is a production of the Greece Public Library, made possible through the support of the Friends of the Greece Public Library. Theme music composed and performed.